right, and I think we are live at this point. YouTube is YouTube at times, so uh, right. all right, yeah, we are oh, I see, I see. Live. yeah, we are definitely live. What's up, everyone? OJ here. Welcome to a special live stream that I have for you guys. I have the one and only Zelda slash Kingdom Hearts extraordinary YouTuber. He's he's doing the Samsara head bop, right? <laughs> 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 He's in the groove, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to my dude, HMK. What's up, Yo, man? How's it going? What is good? Oh, it's going great. Yo, thank you so much for having me on. Hey, how's everyone doing? Uh, I'm I'm having a good time, and I'm ready to have a good time on the stream. So, man, thank you so much for coming on. No, no. Thank, thank, why am I saying coming on? Thank you so much for allowing me to come on. No, dude, you, hey, the, the coolest thing about HMK, man, seriously, he's like, I think we've worked together one other time on the Spawncast um and yep. you're like the coolest dude that's like you know before the stream like he's like the coolest dude man so it's 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 so great because sometimes uh we kind of have the same personality on twitter oh my gosh your twitter your twitter comments are i'm like i like this guy like he doesn't take, <laughs> he doesn't take shit from anybody dude like i like this guy i love I, I try and i try not to because we were talking about this earlier on before the stream is just you know a lot of people forget that you know we're people so like they that doesn't give them a pass to like treat us a certain way. So I mean, oh, ab absolutely, I grab the popcorn on your Twitter, man. It's it's not like it's all the time too. It's like every right. month or two months or so, like somebody just gets a little wilding out. So you got to smack them. Up I've been bit. trying to I've been trying to cut down a little bit. You know, you, you've got yeah. to for your mental health. Otherwise, if you go after everyone and everything, then it just starts. Yeah, exactly. Getting, getting kind of crazy. No, uh, that that block button has been really friendly to me. Yeah, that's hey, that block button. Like... It's it's a good thing, man. Block or infinite mute, like you. Can just throw them into cyberspace where they just never see you again or they never right. you never respond or see anything that they have there it's like um, why are you not getting mad i'm like <laughs> bro have you seen this zelda video like <laughs> yeah i mean that's what i've done sometimes to people uh, put some troll comments i'll just link one of my videos like check out this video like oh that video is crap i'm like i know but you'll probably still watch it don't lie right <laughs> you'll probably still watch it but shout out to hmk man yeah. good to have you here uh i brought you on um, and all of the donations and all of the uh, questions, we'll get to that towards the end of the show. Uh, we're going to go over some business here when it comes down to the Legend of Zelda. That's why I brought him on. Um, if you don't know HMK, please make sure you subscribe to his channel, guys. Um, in the It's in the description um, as well. Uh, so please make sure you subscribe to his channel. It's right there. And of course, if you miss any of this or if you're at work and you have to watch it later, it'll be up on replay on YouTube so you can watch the replay um, and everything. But I want to get into this, man. Um, because I know you're about to get, I mean, I know later you're doing, are you getting your butt kicked and randomizer later? Pretty sure. Not, not today, not today, tomorrow. Not it's today. Wind Waker randomizer Wednesdays. And I, can I tell you for all those that want to try a Wind Waker randomizer, that randomizer specifically might make you hate the game because it really puts to perspective that Wind Waker is a gigantic game. And I've turned half of the chests off. So like all the chests that I need are not under the water. So can you imagine if chests that you need are under the water? Just like, mm -mm. but I'm having a good time. My my pain is my gain. So <laughs> I, and the the pain that I see you go through is very nice. I I, I like that as, as a viewer. It's fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just sit down. You know what I'm saying? I'm editing a video and I watch and I just laugh the whole time. So make sure you guys check out uh, HMK. Uh, can you type in the chat real quick just so I can mod you so you can uh, link stuff in the future if I have you on and everything. Got so, you. Uh, so um. So yeah, if you can link your your uh, when you get the opportunity, you can link your what's it called your your Twitch page too because you're on there. How many times do you stream? Um, uh, I try to stream as uh, as often as possible, probably like five days a week. Yeah, uh, yeah usually weekends off, but uh, I try to stream as much as I can. Yeah, I usually catch at least two or three of those times. I see you see you live. So uh, make sure you check out um, HMK's uh, Twitch page. You just go look up HMK. It's it's there. Um, also, he's on. Yes, and he's still on YouTube. Some people are saying, oh, he's on YouTube. Yes, he's on YouTube. He just made a fantastic video that we're gonna talk about right here, man. Um, and shout the fairy tiger for the 20 he says let's do this dragon quest 11 is amazing dragon quest 11 is amazing uh but let's get into some zelda talk that's why you're here let's man. do it um so zelda you put out a video the other day and like i said i don't want to ruin it for people make sure you guys go watch that video but basically the premise is since pretty much i think right after i know you were talking about on live stream you think this game is 2020 um 2020 wh what are the signs why do you think this game is 2020 especially when they just announced it for this year's e3 because uh we were talking about that earlier that honestly they did not have to put that trailer out. They really didn't. And that's one of the things that I think that is one indicator that we can see Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 in 2020. 
And then there are all these like little things that I like to point towards, like the notion of 2020, which is not really that big of details for the fact that Zelda 20 is Breath of the Wild 2 is Zelda 20 and Zelda 20 in 2020. That would be nice. But a lot of people want to play around with the idea that 2021 might be a good date for them because it is the 35th anniversary. But I think that uh, Zelda 20, no, Breath of the Wild 2 coming out in 2020 will be a good way to pave a lot of hype stuff for 2021. Uh, you know, maybe have some books come out because I mean, we've had uh, the Legends of the Book series that are, has come out. We have four books we have uh, Encyclopedia, uh, Hyrule Historia, um, Arts and Artifacts, and of course, Breath of the Wild's own book, which is Creating a Champion. And speaking of creating a champion, when you look into the book all the way at the end, uh, Mr. Al Numa, producer of the Legends of the series, says that the next Zelda has already begun, and those interviews were taken. In October of 2017, mm. from Nintendo's headquarters. You're right about that. And uh, a lot of people want to bring up, in the video, a lot of people want to bring up, which is fine, uh, that he could have meant Link's Awakening. However, however, Link's Awakening was developed by Grezzo and not Nintendo EPD, which is Anuma's house team, especially when it comes to developing the original Breath of the Wild. Mm. So I don't think he was talking about Link's Awakening during that interview. And when you look at Breath of the Wild 2 at E3, Bro, that game, it looked pretty complete. Because uh, when we had the first Breath of the Wild trailer, that it looked good, but it looked kind of janky. Like, it looked like, like to me, it looked like, man, we ain't going to see this game for a while. It, it, no, you're right about that. It did, look, it did look like that because it looked like, okay, is this actual gameplay? They started, like, the cinematic camera angles and stuff like that. Whereas this one, you can clearly tell it was in-engine uh, cutscene for like the story part of the game and then when they showed the overworld thingy it was like or like the, the world over, it was like yo this is the world was rendering you saw like the, the leaves and stuff like that so it was definitely right. in the engine right there it seemed it, it seemed a bit more complete you know? exactly and speaking of engines you know breath of the wild 2 is literally breath of the wild 2 this is the most sequel this is the most a sequel can get when it comes to a Zelda game. We've had Zelda game sequels before, uh, Link's Awakening. Zelda 2, obviously. Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time. Uh, Phantom Hourglass to uh, The Wind Waker. But for the first time in Zelda history, this is getting to be the most fully-fledged sequel a game can get. Because we not only are we getting the same engine, we're getting the same characters, the same setting, the same high rule. We're just continuing a story that was already said in Breath of the Wild. Majora's Mask, you know, kind of went off the rails and we went to Terminum. Yes, it is the same Link, but it's not the same world. It's not the same characters. Yeah, they're the same models, but they're not the same characters. But, you know, Zelda games, when it, gets, when it comes to sequels, they always go off the rails. Not Breath of the Wild 2. We're going to a very, very familiar place. We're returning to the Hyrule we know and love. The biggest Hyrule ever in Breath of the Wild. We're going back. So, uh, I feel that considering all of that, development time would be greatly shortened, especially since Breath of the Wild was, uh, it was delayed so many times because they had problems with the physics engine. But now they mastered it, and uh, of course, we're going to be seeing more what they can do with that. Now they ha have it under their complete mastery, they can truly show us what they can do with this engine. So I don't think they're going to be running into any developmental problems that Breath of the Wild originally had. And 2020... That'd have been, that would have been three years of development. And I feel that's very safe. Yeah, th I mean, that is three years. I mean, if they finish with, the, you know, the DLC, right, with the Legend of Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild, the DLC was wrapped up pretty much by the end of that year. Then that's 2017, 2018, 2019, then 2020. Then we're right there. Um, do you possibly think with this, I mean, if it is 2020, when do you think the promotion or marketing, do you think that they're going to start it up earlier in the year, maybe at a direct, or do you think they're going to kind of throw everything at E3 and then bam, it launches end of the year if it is uh that that is a very good strategy and i feel that they're gonna start very 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 soon uh because i make this another point in the video uh the game awards yes. <laughs> breath of the wild has had a home like a huge home in the game awards nintendo and jeff Keighley, they're like this like we've seen breath of the wild three times at the game awards and one time after re release so once Pokemon is out, once Luigi's Mansion is out, Astro Chain Array came out, Link's Awakening Array came out, uh, I feel that it's going to be the right time for the Game Awards for Nintendo to go in. And I feel they're going to go in very hard with Breath of the Wild 2. Maybe we'll get a name. And, of course, possibly Character 5. 
you know, for Super Smash Bros. Coming full circle with uh, the announcement of Joker last year at the Game Awards. They're going to end off the original Fire's Pass with Character 5 at the Game Awards and then also double down with Breath of the Wild 2. Given that their strategy uh, from what we've seen uh, with Breath of the Wild and with recent Nintendo Switch games, I feel it's very safe to assume that once we have a promotional standpoint at uh, the Game Awards, they will go all in at uh, E3. We've seen that with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That game literally got announced in March of 2018, only to be released in December of the same year. And they did all their promotion. It's kind of like Breath of the Wild and Super Smash Bros., the sequel to Breath of the Wild, is a game that kind of promotes itself. So, you know, as long as they give it enough exposure, that's half the work already done. And then it's, it's, given that this game's grand standpoint, the legacy, the status... It'll just get viral in Germany all on its own if it were to give it a huge boost at one of these events. E3 would be a good idea, but, you know, considering the changes that E3 2020 is going to be going yeah, through. It's looking, looking a bit rough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hella rough. So that that's the only thing I feel that's in the way that in the way of its of, you know, the supposed promotional tactics that Breath of the Wild 2 could have going into 2020. But I feel that, you know, it's Nintendo. Nintendo, I feel when when they have promotion, they don't really drop the ball when it comes to promoting one of their bigger games. They always go in, they always go big, and they always, uh, you know, roll to the beat of their own drum. And it's worked for them, you know, for the past few years, and it's definitely worked for them for the Switch. I mean, hell, they could even have their own Breath of the Wild uh, event where it's invite only. They could have it in New York. They can have it in San Diego, anywhere. They did that for Nintendo Switch when they when they literally had that uh, January event in Tokyo the day afterwards in New York when they invited a bunch of us to go play the Switch. Mm. They can have one of those. And then word of mouth would just go crazy it, it, it would be it would be nuts i mean i remember they invited me to do like it, it, this is on a much smaller scale they invited no, me. i remember they did the, exactly the three yeah. houses thing i mean just like like that you and know it, and, it, and it was just like me and roger's base and that kind of like all of our videos kind of blew up it me. just blew up and <laughs> yeah. now everyone and their moms have uh fire Emblem three houses fire yeah. Emblem three houses is my first fully fledged fire Emblem game and i have not yet to been i i, I can't put it down I cannot put it down. And I'm not saying I that I didn't I like, this like guy. it. See, this guy's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and I'm not saying Fire Emblem is bad or Fire Emblem was bad. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, you know what? Everyone's talking about this game. Roger's going in. O OJ's going in. Let, let me get this game. Let me get this game. I play this game and I'm like, I have seen the light. The light oh, there. my <laughs> Lord. And I have yet to... Uh, put this game down. And by the way, guys, uh, hashtag Black Eagles. Black yeah. Eagles. Let's so. go. Black Eagles. Yeah. Let's go. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Lady Eldegard. Um, But, um, yeah, so, like, if they were to do a promotional tactic like that, that couldn't work. You know, Nintendo literally has the world in the palm of their hands as soon as they announce that game. Mm -hmm. and, and and as soon as we knew what it was, it's, it's over. They literally can take minimal effort in promoting this next year and it'll still be a hit if it comes out i have, I have to ask this question because this is next because uh I, you know you're mainly known for of course you, kingdom hearts and zelda so kingdom hearts that's you probably you play that on the playstation 4 yes so i mean so you know you you obviously you're in tune with playstation and all that so you know what's going on um on that side of the camp but this 2020 that is ps5 that is next xbox so do you feel that are they trying to position this to say hey buy legend of zelda maybe there's a bundle maybe there's a new another revision a pro model slightly stronger like a new nintendo 3ds type situation do you feel that that is kind of what i mean is kind of what's going on or what's your synopsis on what's going on if this releases fall or holiday 2020 with the next systems coming out i you know honestly like i said before nintendo they, they like to beat to the they like to roll to the beat of their own drum and you know from a marketing and from an analytical standpoint it would be better for nintendo to get on that you know that new console hype in order to uh i would say bring hype to the not 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 to say the console wars but all the competitive stuff that's going on with the new consoles the next xbox the next playstation and stuff and you know i did have this theory this conspiracy a couple of months ago about the legend of zelda switch like conspiracy and like isn't it funny that link's awakening came out the same day as the switch Lite? and you know a lot of people looking at that game you can consider that a zelda light type of game it's fun i love it 
Uh, but it's you can beat it in ten hours on a good on, on, on comfortably. You can beat it ten hours comfortably, and I feel that was a good you know hand in hand type package deal. Of course, they didn't make a Zelda version of the Switch Lite, but the fact that that came out the same day, I feel nine times out of ten, where it's like, oh, this game looks cute. Let me package this with this cute system, and I give it to my son or daughter or whatever. And that's the whole deal with Link's Awakening. Now, inversely, Breath of the Wild two. We already know Breath of the Wild was definitely a beast of a game, a huge undertaking, and the Switch was able to run it well, even though it did have its problems. It didn't reach full 1080p. It runs at 900. And um, when you enter that Korok Forest, oh, my Lord, that frame, frame dip. Frame, frame rate gets a little gets a little roboty. You know what I'm saying? Gets a, yeah, it gets a little <laughs> janky. A little jank. So I feel that uh, Nintendo might be poised, especially given that the PlayStation – Five and the Xbox One next, or what was it called? Project Scarlet? Yeah. Scarlet. I feel that uh, Nintendo might be gearing themselves to unleash the power of the beast that is Breath of the Wild 2 with a Nintendo Switch Pro. Because a lot of people, especially people calling the Nintendo Switch Lite, the Nintendo Switch Mini, whatever it was called back in the day, feel that a Pro revision is coming. And we still don't know what it is. It could be a dock that makes the switch stronger. It could be another unit that's stronger than you could use the same dock. But um, I feel that Breath of the Wild 2 would be a good premiere game to help push that console. Especially if they're going to go with the route saying that Breath of the Wild 2 plays better on the Pro. I would not want it to be a Pro exclusive. Don't do that. Please. No. And I know Nintendo's not uh, smart enough not to do that. But uh, I feel that play better on the Pro would be a better would, would be a great way to promote not only Breath of the Wild but have all eyes on Nintendo. Hey guys, Nintendo's putting out another Nintendo Switch, a pro version. It's gonna run your games better and it's gonna release with Breath of the Wild. Remember that game is getting a sequel and that you know analysts, uh influencers, YouTubers, Twitch streamers, everybody's gonna have all eyes on Nintendo if that combination were to happen. And then that would bring good competition, especially if we're going next year into uh playstation 5 and project scarlet yeah ab- absolutely absolutely i think that i mean i think you hit the nail on the head like with the you know it is a huge type of game i think it's the type of game that really if you pair it, even if if it's with like a pro or even if it's just like let's just say they did a bundle with it or they just did like the game it's big enough to where people are going to say wow this is probably going to be better than most of the stuff that's out because you know the, the first generation games are usually kind of you know they're i mean they're all right there's nothing wrong right. with them but it's like i mean you're looking back like on the ps4 it's like killzone shadowfall it's like knack you know it's games like that like microsoft had like rome a rise of or son of rome or what was it i don't know that one game it was weird i forgot, I what, that, about, yeah. I forgot what that game is i mean i know that they're, they're working on getting better games like they've bought a lot of studios so there's and then like halo infinite is probably is going to be like a launch title so i'm excited for that one yeah I, you should talk to spawn with you, you can come on the spawn cast you can talk oh, man, about that. i am a halo <laughs> back in the day i was a halo Beam. Oh, me too. Oh, me too, man. by the way. Oh, I, I, we used to do the LAN parties with Halo, where you oh. hook up the TVs and everything. Like, we used to do that oh, back man. in the day, man. <laughs> the, the first Halo where uh, people would hack the living hell out of it were pistols with fire scorpions. And if you would kill by, they would drop grenades. <laughs> and I'm like, what's whatever, it's fine. Oh, man, you did the crazy stuff, man. I used to go to, sometimes we go right. play in tournaments. Oh, my God. People, this was like before yeah. esports got to esports. It, it, oh, it, was, it, was, it was great, Lord. man. It was, it was, it was fantastic. Great. Oh, yeah. The we, land days, I was there. We would play at these, like, we would play at these churches. It was so funny. <laughs> that sounds super nice. Oh, my God. Yeah, but, um, but uh, kind of getting back to, like, Legend of Zelda, I mean, talking about, I mean, so we've talked about 2020 and the potential, uh, thought that it could be then but what about like gameplay because i know my three biggest things that i think that this game would literally be breath of the wild would be perfect in terms of for everyone this is not just for me in terms of what i like but for everyone is dungeons right more dungeons of course yes. yeah more dungeons um obviously technical stuff fix that up a little bit and then um also the narrative and the story and it seems like they could easily fix you know those three things and if they have in like you know, more game, like more armor and more weapons and oh, also weapon breaking. I want to get your thoughts on that. I want to get your thoughts on, like I said, the first thing is like, what could they can fix? And then what's your thought on weapon breaking? My thought, just so you know, is that I think that this should just be a crafting system in the game. You don't have to completely get rid of it. But if you can have a crafting system that says, hey, it's kind of like Fallout 3, right? A weapon gets to where you can't use it anymore. But then if you go, you can craft it back up. Bam, you can use it again. Right. So that's kind of my thought process. But what's your thought process on what they can do to make this game literally perfect and also weapon breaking? Give me give me your thoughts on that. All right. So I'm, I'm going to touch on weapon breaking first. Honestly, 
uh, they made a they made the statement on why they considered weapon breaking and why the you know you it was kind of like the adventure of always finding something. So that's how they you know uh, I would say what's the word? Um, I'm brain farting right now. You know, basically, yeah, there you go. They would justify weapon breaking. That's okay. basically how they would justify weapon breaking. It's like, oh, your weapons will break, so you always find something new because your weapons always break, and then everything's on the horizon, yada, yada, yada. Personally, 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 I know a lot of people really don't like weapon breaking, and that's no, there's no wrong with it because it does get annoying sometimes, especially in the hardcore fights. But honestly, I don't have that much of a problem with weapon breaking. The main problem I had with Breath of the Wild when it comes to weapon breaking and weapons in general, like you said, is crafting, synthesis. I mean, that game seemed perfect for synthesizing weapons, right? Yeah, but man. Don't. And that bothers me so much. And that's one thing I hope that they fix in Breath of the Wild 2. And Breath of the Wild 2, when it comes to other things that will make this literally the perfect Zelda game of Nintendo, I, I feel moving forward with Zelda games, moving forward with games in general, they're very good at listening. And as long as they listen to all the complaints that Breath of the Wild had, because they had a bunch of complaints, and a lot of them are very substantial and are very, very valid. Uh, it's like story. The story itself of Breath of the Wild wasn't bad. It was just the presentation of the story was trash. Uh, the memory system, it doesn't have to stay no more, because Link is back. Zelda's back. They're both there. You mm-hmm. know, Link doesn't, have, Link doesn't lose his memories anymore. So I feel a good. this will be a good uh, opportunity to have a Breath of the Wild-style game with a more cohesive uh, element of storytelling, which will be bonkers. You know that that will be so <laughs> hype. Like, yeah. oh my lord, let's get it right. Yeah, so, absolutely. To consider. Oh my god, I'm just thinking about it. Um, another thing uh, would be more enemy variety. That's a huge complaint that was in Breath of, the original Breath of the Wild. Yeah, sure, we got different variants of certain enemies like Lazoflos, uh, Bacoblins, Moblins. Yeah, but I mean. There were just variants of these enemies we see time and time again. The mm-hmm. elemental variants are cool, I, I'm not going to lie. But I want to see more enemy types. Now, given that this game is going to be darker than Majora's Mask, and it's like spooky, scary, you know, we're in October, uh, I feel that this will be the grand time to bring out some more scarier enemies of Breath of the Wild, uh, of, of the Zelda series back to Breath of the Wild too. And I'm talking about Wall Masters, Floor Masters, Dead Hands, Skulltulas, Pose. Pose. Where are my pose? Where's your pose? Like, we need them. I, I, like, we need the pose. Nighttime. Pose. Nighttime. The pose come out, dude. Yeah. So bring those enemies back. That's another way to make this game stellar. And then, like you said before, dungeons, dungeons, dungeons. I didn't have a problem with Divine Beast. I thought Divine Beast were really, really cool, but it does have it does leave you longing for the more traditional dungeons of Zelda uh, your right I, and I, I, can i interject what? real quick because i want to get ahead. your thoughts as you uh, keep your thoughts so don't don't lose that yeah. thought what you're gonna have but i want to i want to run this one by you what are like a real okay. zelda master like yourself thinks about this so you know I, i'm not the biggest fan of puzzles i'm not the biggest fan of the zelda dungeons but i understand that people do like them do you feel that maybe in order to kind of keep both people that just like the free roaming aspect of not having to do all the dungeons and all that and to get the people that are hardcore into the Zelda dungeons, what do you think about like a, a lot of optional big dungeons? If you go in there, you do them, you get something amazing. You know what I'm saying? For those who actually go in there and do it, they get the really cool stuff. They get the cool story pieces. And if you want to skip it, okay, just like you can go and skip all the other stuff and go straight to Ganon. What do you think about that? Because I felt that would, that would benefit both people. It's like people who want to really explore and get in. Man, they got their dungeons. People who just want to go play, they can just go play. What do you think about that, man? I feel that's perfect. I feel that's, you know, that was a good flow they had in the original Breath of the Wild where, like, literally you can go any direction. If you want to go straight for Ganon, go for it. Keep that. Don't take that away. That was such a breakthrough in, uh, I would say, open world sandbox type uh, gameplay where literally you're just dropped in this world and you're just told to go just go everything you need you you get started off the great plateau that was ingenious that was like literally the tutorial level and it was a fun tutorial level you know a great plateau a, a, a map size bigger than the entirety of ocarina of time is your tutorial level and as soon as you get all the shika runes and stuff and you're good to go you just go on the world and you do your thing bro do not change that i would love for that approach to come back and to be refined a little bit more which is crazy when you think about because this game is a sequel. Considering that it's a sequel, you know, uh, one thing I like to reference when it comes to, like, sequels and then just going out into the world because you're already equipped 
is Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. When you start Banjo Tooie, it the game assumes that you played Banjo Kazooie already. By that, they give you all the moves that you already had that you had to learn throughout the entirety of Banjo Kazooie. You have all those moves to your repertoire already in Banjo Tooie, and you keep learning no, uh, more moves. In Breath of the Wild 2, Link already seems like set. He's balling, right? So given that this is a sequel, a fully fledged sequel, I want the game to assume that you already played Breath of the Wild to a certain degree where these are all your moves. We'll give you a little bit of space to try them out. All right, you got it? Let's get it. Go for it, right? Mm. And then, like you said, for uh, optional dungeons, I actually made this video not too long ago with Zeltic, uh, another awesome Zelda YouTuber, great brother. Uh, he and I made this theory about optional elemental dungeons that can grant you awesome abilities that are not required for the game but if you get it yes oh boy that's, you will love that, it and i saw that video of yours and that's i mean i was already thinking about that i was thinking i was like yes that's what I, I i want that in there because that was i think one of the, the things with me with zelda games it's like you have to do this like you have to do this and th that was the thing that was grinding on me with zelda games for all those years like you have to you have to if you're stuck right. here you're stuck you're screwed if you're stuck. You know what I'm saying? Water exactly. Temple back in the day. You're screwed. But what if you can kind of play? Or, you know, what if you can get up? I was stuck on that Water Temple for a week, by the way. And I and I, right. I had to go to school to ask my friend how to get it. Because, <laughs> like, back then, the internet wasn't like like what it is now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, or, it was like game facts, the stupid thing. But, all, but it, all the rumors about unlocking Sonic and Tails in Melee. Oh, yeah. how about Mew underneath the truck? How about that one? <laughs> Yeah, that was Remember that one? I, dude, I was pushing that truck. I was doing all sorts of stupid stuff. Never worked. Oh, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I loved your video on that, man. But uh, I know you wanted to finish continuing one of your other thoughts with, uh, like, the, the layout of the game. So anything else you wanted to right. add to that, man? Yeah. Um, the door, uh, the dungeon. Uh, I want dungeons to return. I, you know, I, I honestly want both. Nah, I, I want to I be super greedy and want all types of dungeons to return in Breath of the Wild 2. I want Sheikah Shrines to come back. I want Divine Beast-esque, uh, you know, puzzle dungeons where it's literally like a Rubik's Cube. I want those dungeons to come back. I thought that was great. I want them to be bigger. That would be great, too. And I want more traditional dungeons to come back. And then I want Nintel to decide what is, like, semi-obligatory that, like, the game wants you to do but you don't have to do decide what dungeons are that what decide what dungeons are completely optional and decide what dungeons are just you know along the road like sheikah shrines and stuff mm -hmm. and then a lot of people come and ask me or any type of zelda tuber uh they're like but if we're going back to the legend of zelda hyrule that was in breath of the wild i mean we explored all of it where are the dungeons gonna be and this is like the awesome part where i'm like bro nintendo can Take that map, that already ginormo map, and just double it by adding underground. And mm. that is where all the dungeons Pe will be. People have been talking about that in the chat, about like underground and all of that. So explain to me the concept, for those who don't know, explain the concept of this underground that you're, yeah, they, that you're theorizing about. Right. So the, the underground is something that we, we've seen before in Zelda games. We've seen... Uh, the aspect of a dual world. We haven't really seen that aspect of a dual world in uh, Breath of the Wild, only if you want to count the fact that you see memories from 100 years ago and you have to deal with that fallout, but you don't really experience that uh, dual world. We've always kind of seen that in Legend of Zelda games. In um, A Link to the Past. It Link was, to the uh, Past, yeah. The Dark World. It was world. Uh, Hyrule yeah, and the yeah. Dark World. Mm -hmm. Ocarina of Time. It was the two time periods. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Twilight Prince. It was the light world twilight realm there was always that aspect of mm -hmm. the dual world right and that dual world in breath of the wild 2 could be or the overworld and the underworld the underground right and then a concept that we that me and my friends had as soon as that trailer came out like literally a day afterwards is guys remember all those shika towers they're not towers they're elevators and oh wow into each specific crevice oh my god I rule. Oh my gosh, that's God tier! <laughs> and, I never even thought about that! And, Yo. and you, going into each one of those towers, each one of those elevators can lead you down to a certain area that will open up another area and then it will be all interconnected once you're done with all those towers and stuff. Mm. And the biggest thing that got me going with that thought is that it, there is one Shika Tower in particular in the Gerudo region where it's literally going down a bottomless pit. And I'm like, 
that's where the dungeons are in Breath of the Wild 2. It's down there. And of course, in Breath of the Wild 2, in the in the in the trailer, they were it seemed that they were underground, deep below the surface. So that's where we're all gonna be mm. going. And those towers, those shikatas that we opened up in the past game, those are elevators. That's our ticket down to the underground. Man, that 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 is a. I, I never even thought about that. And like this whole underground, like I know people have brought it up, and you know, like the first trailer that we saw, it does seem like we're in some type of cave or more dungeon. But I think that's yeah. also like foretelling. I think the game was like, okay, look, you're going to be going through more dungeons. There are going to be more things like that. And like I, I saw from that trailer, and I saw your analysis and your breakdown. But what I saw just on a basic entry level is that there's going to be more dungeons. That's what it seems like. There's going to be more story elements. Um, and there's going to be more just of a connected uh, type of cohesive story. It's going to be part of it, like darker theme than everything. But let's right. talk about this before we kind of get into um, some of the last thing. Because we went over story, went over uh, gameplay, theories, and all that. And then we'll get into questions. Because I'm sure like a lot of people will have right. questions for you, of course. Uh, and they'll be, you'll be able to ask, like if you have like Kingdom Hearts stuff, you'll be, we'll, we'll give about 10, 15 minutes if you want to ask them nice. questions like that. Um, but uh, the last thing is like co-op. I mean, people have been talking about like, you know, Princess Zelda, do you think there's going to be co-op in this game? Do you think it's going to be, you're going to be able to switch off maybe certain segments that you can play as her? What is your um, a thought on that? I know your thought, but I'm letting it to the audience. What is what is your thought on this in terms of what, what they can do with it going forward for a compelling gameplay or better narrative? All right, better narrative, competitive gameplay, and of course, co-op. Uh, let me tackle co-op really quickly first, is that I feel Breath of the Wild 2 has the capacity to be co-op, but then at the same time, it's going to be, you know, uh, weird because you have to look at the double-edged sword where uh, is it going to be split-screen, couch co-op, but at the same time, this game's on the Switch. Like, uh, me and my fiance, we both have a Switch. Yes. We can ha we can connect our Switches, uh, and just, then I'm like, okay, I'm playing on the big screen. And I just got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Stop it. Stop it, right? <laughs> I just got and goosebumps. Then, <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then that's how we do co-op. Right, and that that seems very ambitious. Yes. And you know, Nintendo. A lot of people's like, no, Nintendo they won't do that. But then, then again, Breath of the Wild. I keep pointing this way, but you guys can't see on camera. I ha like I have this big poster of Breath of the Wild right here, so that's why I keep pointing. We know that you have it there. There's obviously <laughs> something awesome up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Breath of the Wild was very ambitious in its own right, and Nintendo broke down a lot of conventions of the Zelda series in Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild Two is coming around. You know, what's to say that they won't keep breaking down conventions of The Legend of Zelda and Breath of the Wild stuff with co-op? But then you have to understand, you have to think about how is it going to be directed in terms of story if we're going to do co-op. Because the scariest thing that's in the back of my head of Nintendo not doing co-op is if Nintendo does another Zelda lore cop-out. Where if this trailer is going to be in the beginning of the game, Link and Zelda are in the, the depths and there goes Ganondorf's corpse. And he wakes up and Zelda sees him wakes up. And uh, Gandalf's like, yeet, and just takes her. And then like, oh, we got to save Zelda again. And that's going to be the beginning of the game. And I'm like, don't do that. I, you know, we've seen that time and time again. I'm kind of tired of it. I really want Zelda and Link's relationship and their story to flourish together in Breath of the Wild 2. And, of course, that will allow co-op. Uh, but then, yeah, it's kind of janky on how co-op will run. Is it going to be in split screen? Like I said before, is it going to be on screen versus screen? Is it going to be swapping? I feel the safest route, if they're going to do co-op, might be swapping something akin to what we see in uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate with the Fry Twins, or if you guys played it, the uh, Kingdom Hearts of Gene Drop Distance, where we swap between two main characters. You know, uh, certain missions, certain aspects will be played out through Zelda, and certain aspects or missions will be played out through Link. And, you know, then again, it could work out like if uh, Ganondorf does steal Zelda away. Uh, for those who watch The Mummy Returns, you know, it could be that kind of give and take gameplay where uh, you play as certain segments as Zelda, leaving clues behind or reluctantly helping Ganondorf finding what he needs. <clears throat> Triforce. Um, <laughs> but uh, there are so many options where, you know, Zelda could be playable. And I wish Nintendo would visit some of those options, please. Yes. And as for a cohesive story, you know, like I said before, Link is not knocked out. Link has not lost his memory. Link is here. He's in the present. It's now. There is stuff happening in our face. So uh, Nintendo had really has the opportunity to conduct a grand story. But if we're going to have an open sandbox type game without memories to drive the player forward in finding out the story, then how are we going to get the story? A very cool way for it to be done is, you know take away that type of forceful hand-holding 
that is like, okay, in order to know everything, go there. We're in the picture. You know, look at this photograph. You know, go to where the photographs are and you'll learn a part of the story. No. Take the approach that you guys kind of did in a link between worlds where every you go find a dungeon. You beat that dungeon and then the dungeon will give you story. But the dungeons, uh, what do you call them? The dungeons, uh, which I'm going to call them, uh, lay, uh, no, uh, layout and the dungeon's order is not dictated uh, by which memory you want first because it will always be in a set order. So let's say, okay, there is um, 10 dungeons. You decide to beat dungeon one first, you get, mem- you get memory one or story piece one. But on another playthrough, you decide to do dungeon five, you're still going to get story piece one by doing dungeon five first. Mm, you know, okay, uh, I see what you're that's saying. That's an idea, mm-hmm. right? There, there's an idea to do that. And then, of course, that's going to be Link and Zelda's, uh, I would say, that's their story being told that way. But another thing, and a lot of people are like, no, don't do it. I want memories to return, but not in the way you think. Because Ganondorf has been missing from the Zelda series. Ganondorf, not Ganon. Ganondorf has been missing from the Zelda series for more than 10 years. Yeah, it's been a while. Whereas, yeah, where, where has this guy been? Right. So I feel that a cool function that they could or incorporate into Breath of the Wild 2, reusing the memory aspect, is looking for memories. But when you find memories, they're not your own memories. They're Ganondorf's memories. And you see what he mm. went through through his eyes leading up to his mummification or whatever that is in whatever state. And you will get the full delicious lore by doing all of that. The story will be still told through Link and Zelda. Link and Zelda's story will still be told naturally. Yeah. But if you want to get the other side of the story, you have to find Dude, it yourself through Andros Memory. Th- that would be nuts. I mean, this game's scale would obviously it's 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 gonna be crazy. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be great to see too, though. I think this can easily be a you know, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild was, I think, that's the best selling single release Zelda game yes, of oh. all time. This could easily be a 20 million unit seller with all the yeah. extra hype and people that it could it, it could blow it up. Just kind of like Smash Brothers is blowing up the Smash franchise. I mean, even with right? the you know, compared to like the Wii and you know and the 3DS that have much bigger install bases yet smash ultimate is just you know because they went all it's destroying out everything yeah it's destroying everything so um so great stuff man hmk you, you never fail to deliver when it comes to zelda theories and yeah, uh, stuff you, like man. that man um let's get about 10 minutes or so of questions um if you have a question for me or hmk you can just tag me or you can tag hmk um and i'll read off questions uh so if you guys have it uh there's about a sec- six second uh delay so we'll let them uh I'll let them get going with that and um and yeah we'll answer questions for about 10 more minutes uh, just to give you guys a little bit of, uh, like I said, once again, um, make sure you guys check out HMK's channel. If you like, um, if you like Legend of Zelda, if you like, um, if you like Kingdom Hearts, if you like stuff like that, he's uh, other RPGs too. I mean, he's talking about Fire Emblem. You like that type of stuff? Make sure you check out his channel. Subscribe. I've been subscribed for years now. Fantastic Thank channel. You. Has over a hundred thousand subscribers. So uh, hit that. What, what is it? A silver? Is it a silver play button? Silver yeah, play silver play button. button. Silver play button there, so make sure you check that out. Uh, so let's see if you guys have some questions. Uh, Siva says, HMK, what did you think about, uh, is it Kakari? Kyrie. Kairi. 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 Yeah. Uh, not being playable in Kingdom Hearts 3, and would Breath of the Wild 2 automatically be better uh, game than Kingdom Hearts 3 if Zelda were playable because of that? That's, a, that's such an interesting that's a, that's a loaded question, bro. <laughs> it is a loaded question. You know, uh, I, I wasn't as hurt as a lot of uh, my colleagues or a lot of other people within the Kingdom Hearts community that Kyrie wasn't playable because I kind of saw that coming. Because if you know the story of Kingdom Hearts, Kyrie was only part of the team, the main team, to go against the bad guy team uh, because they needed her. She was a, a success, she was a necessity, but in the, at, the, at the end of the day, she was more of a liability than, uh, than truly an asset, right? And Kyrie not being playable in Kingdom Hearts 3, it didn't even hurt me as much. Uh, I would love to see her playable in the DLC, maybe. Uh, but if Zelda were to be playable, you know... Uh, that uh, again, I would love Zelda to be playable, but it's not something I'm gonna kick, uh, kick myself over or kick Nintendo over if she's not playable in Breath of the Wild 2. And uh, Kingdom Hearts and Zelda, they're both their own different beasts. They're my top two uh, game series, but it's not like oh, Kyrie's not playable in Kingdom Hearts 3. Hold that against that. If Zelda would be playable in Breath of the Wild 2, haha, you know that's yeah. already automatically better. Uh, I would love it, 
Uh, but it's not really some I'm gonna kick it, myself you'd have or, to, or kick other. You'd have to over. base it on game per game, like what this game does, right. what and how does it work? Because I mean that doesn't make one better than the other because it has this one thing, you know. So makes sense. Um, let me show you if I can get another uh, question here, maybe that you haven't mm -hmm. answered before. Um, let's see here. What if the or he says uh, Shadow King says what if the reason Ganondorf was mummified was that he was for the first time in Zelda lore he had all three aspects of the Triforce in balance since the aspects are neither good or evil. I hate to be that guy. <laughs> Go ahead and be that guy though. We like to be that but, guy here. <laughs> but but Ganondorf Ganon has had all three pieces of the Triforce before and he still got and he still got his ass kicked. Uh, in a link to the past, <laughs> in a link to the past, Ganondorf Ganon had all the Triforce. Um, and I don't, and you know, obviously Ganondorf gets sealed for a reason, and I feel that a huge reason why Ganondorf was modified or sealed is because um, the, the big underlying theory that's being spread around and stuff, and something that I really agree when it comes to the common thoughts, is that. Uh, the re not the reason why Gandorf was sealed, but the reason why Gandorf was hid was that uh, the royal family and the Sheikah, they, I feel they wanted to preemptively stop the whole cycle of destruction, the whole curse of demise. They wanted to preemptively stop it. It's like, okay, because they were very knowledgeable about that in Breath of the Wild, which is weird. You know, n n not once before in a Zelda game have they like, yo, so Ganondorf is actually this incarnation of this demon that's been plaguing us time and time again. They knew about that. And I'm like, huh. And with that knowledge, I feel comes consequence. And I feel that since they knew, they actively seeked out who would carry the title of Ganondorf, who would carry the title of Demise's incarnation. And they want to put a stop to that ASAP, which is messed up when you think about it. And when you do think about it, I feel the royal family and the Sheikah would know that's messed up. So, okay, let's get this guy. Let's seal him before anything happens. And let's just hide him. Because if anyone were to know that we did this, that would lead to really bad things. <laughs> that would lead to, like, you know, insurrection and stuff. And really, really bad stuff. So let's, let's grab him. Let's kill him. But they can't kill him. Let's kill him and let's hide him. And mm -hmm. that's what they did. But then, you know, lo and behold, uh, the malice seeped out of him. And, you know, we got Calamity again. Which, yep. in some aspects, is a thousand times worse because the kingdom fell. Yeah. So, you know, with that being considered, I feel that is the reason why they sealed him and hit him. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Uh, Jake Miller has a good question here. Um, and he says, HMK, how will item-based puzzles work if there is no set dungeon order? Well, similar to how to The Legends of the Breath of the Wild worked, you didn't really get items uh, as you went on. Well, I mean, you got items, yeah. But, I mean, like, you, the main core things that you have to have in Breath of the Wild are your Sheikah runes, your weapon, and a bow, right? And as long as you have these core items, not it doesn't specifically have to be these core items, but as long as you get the core items in the beginning of the game and uh, Nintendo just tells you to go, then it's up to you to figure out how to use those items to get past certain dungeon aspects in uh, the next game. You know, as long as you have your sword, as long as you have your powers... You know, because I feel that's a really big thing that we're going to get in Breath of the Wild, too. Uh, similarly to how we got Sheikah runes, those were powers. Those were abilities. As long as you have your powers, your abilities, uh, in the beginning of the game, then you have all the tools you need in order to succeed. The only thing in, the, in your way is figuring out how to use them. And I feel that's going to be a very interesting way of how they're going to apply dungeons to us in Breath of the Wild, too. And, you know, given Nintendo, I feel they're very smart in putting out that layout and having us figure out how to use certain things certain aspects certain i would say elemental uh interactions uh how your powers are interact with certain things you know using uh magnesis for metal uh burning down wood and leaves with fire and freezing certain uh, free freezing fire or putting fire out with cold temperature in order to uh, you know move forward as long as you have all those tools uh available to you in the beginning it's up to you to figure out how to use them to get to get by so i feel that's good I do also want to give a shout out to um, Ibrahim Gunner. Thank you for the twenty dollars donation. Um, and he also. Hey, Ibrahim Gunner! 
I'm good. I remember it. Yo, Gunu, what's up? Yeah, he Yo. said he's a big fan. He said he's, uh, he's, uh, we, me and you are his two favorite YouTubers. Hey, Matt, so. well, this, oh, this must be like candy day for you, then. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty happy about that. Uh, so he did donate and said, couldn't hold myself and not support this. So thank you, Arim. Um, <laughs> he's, he's a good, he's a good, he's actually a really nice dude and he, he yeah. supports. So yeah, I, I've seen him around on some of the streams too with you as well. Nice. So good stuff. Um, all right. So we'll take uh, another question or two. And uh, Yanez, or J is it Janez? Janez says, HMK, do you think Breath of the Wild 2 will be the Majora's Mask type of dark or Twilight Princess type of dark? So the psychological uh, psychological dark versus dark uh, imagery type of thing? Or like, what right, do you, I yeah. don't know, we talked about it a little bit, but how's your, what's your thought process again on that? Uh, I feel it could be both. Uh, it, could, it, it could be uh, both, and we'll add another layer to it, because as we all know, uh, Majora's Mask uh, was dark, very dark in a psychological aspect. Uh, Twilight Princess was dark in a more... It, it's hard to describe it, it I would say, in a, in a more mature and realistic aspect. Not in, oh, the graphics are realistic. No, like, in, in realistic. Like, you deal with the horrors of war. You deal with uh, harsh choices made by your governing, uh, you know, your, 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 uh, your government and stuff, and then the people have to deal with that fallout and stuff, and Hyrule has to deal with all the choices being made uh, with, uh, you know, Zan taking over, Zelda making the choice to surrender, and all that stuff. So, those are dark in uh, very different ways. I feel that if they were to combine those aspects uh, in Breath of the Wild, that would be great, and add another label, layer on top of that of dark in a physical, uh, philosophical sense. Because we were, t I was touch touching upon this earlier, you know, in the sense of, do the ends justify the means? Where... If it becomes true that the reason why Gandalf was sealed at his state, at, at, in his state like that, is because uh, the Hyrulean government, uh, the Hyrulean royal family, wanted to be preemptive in starting stopping this chain of destruction or whatever, was that right for them to do? Either way, they felt the consequences. But I also want to dive deep into Gandalf's character in the sense where I don't want him to be good, but I want him to know and convey to us that potentially, as evil as he is. He was wronged without doing anything first. Like, he could have been planning, and then they, they got him before he, 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 his plans even went to fruition. And then that has to make you think, is that wrong or is that right? Do the ends justify the means? And they played around with that a little bit in Twilight Princess because uh, due to Link going back to the past uh, after Ocarina of Time into the Child Time and being a snitch, uh, they were able to grab Gandalf before he did any damage that would lead to the events of Ocarina of Time in, after the time skip, right? So they grabbed him, and they tried to execute him, and that didn't work, and we all saw yeah. what happened Yeah, it didn't, didn't quite work out the way they, they were hoping. Exactly. <laughs> so it's funny how they kind of, it's funny how they might have repeated that in uh, Breath of the Wild story. So uh, that's, the, that's the dark aspect you have to think about. When is like what what it was right and wrong afflicted to Ganondorf, and is he rightfully mad? Is he rightfully, uh, you know, disdained, disdaining the royal family and the gods at this point? He's like, I'm just a man born with this power. It's not my fault that Demise's curse dwells within me. Yet you want to target me because of a curse that I couldn't control on my birth. So the psychological uh, realism realism of war and a philosophical sense of darkness could be laid on top of each other to make Breath of the Wild 2 the type of game that just makes you go bro who and Nintendo's hurting right now like, <laughs> like <laughs> guys they gotta try to mix things up um but we'll right. take we're gonna take uh one more question here I also want to say shout out to Dragon Zor with the two dollar donation he says OJ plus a big Zelda and Kingdom Hearts enthusiast Best day ever. So shout outs to shout outs to HMK there. Make sure you guys check out HMK's channel. Once again, link in the description. This will, this will be the last question. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to everybody's questions today, but HMK has a life. Okay, he has a life that he has to deal with. Oh, uh, I'm, well, I'm getting pretty hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take one more question here. I've already had him on for longer than I said I would. So uh, HMK, do you think we will see the return of the hook shot or something similar to uh, to it, like the ability of the Sheikah Slate? The hook shot. The hook shot. Everyone's asking about the <laughs> hook shot. Yeah. You know, you gotta Ball have shot, it. Hook shot, Double hook shot? You know. That'd be great. Double claw shot. I, yeah. I love it. Um, I think the claw shot, the hook shot could return because a lot of people were missing that in Breath of the Wild. And given how big Breath of, uh, Breath of the Wild uh, was, 
Breath of the Wild 2 could be needing of an item like that in order to help you move around faster, especially given how vertical the game is. You know, maybe some people don't want to climb. And the fact that this is, a, I feel, is the biggest indicator that the hookshot could return is that the champions, you know, the people who gave you the champion powers in Breath of the Wild, they departed. They departed the land of the living. Their, their, their souls are at rest. And you know what that means? No more Rivali's Gale. So no more ascending high up in order to ditch the climbing. So in order to compensate that missing ability, hook shots could return. And I feel that's a good item to have midway throughout the game to like let you know. It's like, all right, so halfway throughout the game, you're going to deal with this nonsense of going on the world on your own two feet, your horse's feet, whatever, climbing, whatever. You're going to deal, right? And halfway through the game, I was like, okay, now you can use the hookshot to go around quicker and stuff, especially if you're, the underground is going to be a thing and there's going to be crevices and canyons. That would be a great way to like, okay, there was no way for you to get past this canyon before, but now you got the hookshot, so now you can. So now that's the next part of the, of the world for you to be opened up at the halfway point of the game or whatever. And uh, yeah, so I, I feel hookshot and claw shots do have the prime time to return in breath of the wild 2 and i would like them to return i know everyone's been asking about that and i yeah. i'm a believer I'm a that, believer. that's I, that's a question that i get whenever we talk about legend of zelda and all of that so all right guys we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this one here thank you so much to hmk my guest for uh coming on to talk about the legend of zelda breath of the wild we definitely have to have you back on i know you said you're a big thank pokemon you so man, you're a big pokemon I'm, fan so we gotta maybe have you back on for Pokemon. <laughs> Yo, I'm down. Don't you just hit me up? I am just. I am moving the message away. Bro. All right, so sounds good. I'm gonna link HMK's channel. Make sure you guys all go subscribe. Follow him on Twitch as well. He has a Twitch channel where he plays The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Randomizer. Um, it is more of a rated R type of stream, but it's hilarious. So just don't watch Ooh. it with your kids or anything like that. But go out there and watch it. It is fantastic. Some of the best entertainment on Twitch, man. I, I watch those whenever I'm editing. I'm just I'm just laughing. It puts a smile on my face. So make sure you guys check out HMK, um, his YouTube channel. He does Zelda theories. He does Kingdom Hearts. Uh, he does a lot of um, collaborations with other YouTubers like Zeltix and stuff like that. Like you talked about his theory videos are very well done high quality uh videos thank you, thank you. uh get great views and everything so and like i said he has over a silver play button over a hundred thousand subscribers going on a hundred and forty thousand a hundred and fifty yep. somewhere in that range so uh, make sure you guys check out hmk and hmk thanks again uh, thanks once again um any uh content that you want to let people know about for the week that they can look forward to that you have uh, i have a huge 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 theory that i'm actually i was working on before uh i got here a huge legend of zelda theory uh, considering Breath of the Wild 2, of course, considering that hand, you might not see that hand in the same light once I'm through with you with this theory. Oh, That's man. That's the now. It what? should be out this week. And Oof. then, of course, a lot of people uh, on my Kingdom Hearts side are looking forward to the Price of the Power of Waking Part 3 theory. That's coming out this week, too. So I hope you guys will look forward to that. I have a, a, a lot of more surprises along for the week, but those are the main two things I want you guys, you guys hyped up. It's a huge Zelda theory, a huge Kingdom Hearts theory, Something that a lot of people have been looking forward to and something that I feel that's going to be talked about for months to come. All right. And also, if you want to get into Kingdom Hearts, he actually, uh, HMK has a uh, Kingdom Hearts like in five minutes or something like that. Like the story. I know yeah. you did. Yeah, I watched that. That's how I initially got. I was like, okay, I understand. Nice. Uh, so make sure you check out that. If you want to get into it, he's the guy to watch as well. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for the donations, guys. Thank you for everybody that came out. Had a huge, had, I think we topped like at one, uh, 270 people. So thank or 280 nice. people uh, for the morning. You guys go back to work. Okay. I know all of you guys watching this at work. Go back to work before you get fired or your, bo your boss catches you guys. I hope, I hope, I hope not. <laughs> no. We're just, I'm just joking. You know, people got that on that corner minimize. You know, you know. I, I know you had a regular, you had a, you had a one of those day jobs before. You used to watch YouTube videos, right? It's your game. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Glad we don't got to do that crap anymore. <laughs> right? Oh my lord. But all right, yeah, yo, when's my break? Where's my break? <laughs> Seriously, break time, man. Twitch on the. Oh man, I'm so happy about that. But no, shout outs to everybody. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we will see you guys for the next one. Bye.